You're listening to the Monday Night Community Show with Daniel on BRFM. This is the Daniel Monday Night Community Show on demand through YouTube. Thank you very much for choosing to listen to us through this method. If you'd like to keep up to date with when I add new interviews, then subscribe to this channel. We present Double Act by Trisha Brachia with Juliet Vaughan Turner. Holly Galanders and Ian Sterling. Why did you not bring him? It was thought you may be in a state of discombobulation. Such that I should not know my own dear boy. One could hardly mistake such a reliable source of affection. And yet you talk as if you had none other. Well, supposing I had not been found dead in the lake, but instead I were believed living as a quite alternative person. Not as a man, as would be. I hope I do not flatter myself a little troublesome to maintain, and I suspect rather tryingly dull. But as a woman, other than I am, of my own age, a spinster perhaps, in possession of a comfortable income from a dead relative, and entirely able to take care of herself, she should live wholly undisturbed, do you not think? In time, or in time she should be more than a little changed, and soon she might forget that she had ever existed otherwise. It is possible, is it not? I suspect it has been achieved. And what then? Might you ever have come looking for me? Seeking me out in some doomed elderly mission? Perhaps when you had wearied of sport with her? I don't suppose I should have ventured far. Oh, such pluck and determination! If only I had left my dear old girl safe in the garage, I could have walked to Timbuk in plain sight. Why could you not be like any other wife? Why could you not have merely turned the other cheek? I think you mean a blind eye. What did I say? The other cheek, like Jesus. Must you bring the Bible into this? Oh, poor old Lazarus. What if he had wanted to stay dead? Such drama. At least in fiction there is the possibility of an alternative ending. Or maybe said and done, yet a character might for no other reason than the author bids it relent and realise the error of his ways. Your life is not yet over. And yet, I cannot make you love me. Oh, I'm quite well, just packing my things. Pack your things, then, or we will have to fetch the doctor. I can't stay. Two little hands around his craven neck. Murder, as I have long suspected, is terribly easy. Stop it! Please! Ariadne, I cannot breathe! You have not uttered my name in months. I am going. You cannot just leave. I am come close to being throttled by my own wife. I merely meant to frighten you a little. You succeeded, and now I must return to my quiet life. Why? You do not know. I suppose she is waiting in our bedroom, or is she in reception awaiting her final triumph? Caroline is with her parents, trying to bear with all of this. Caroline. Caroline, what a dear, sweet little name. She is not a bad girl. Led astray by a wicked man. Is it so very wicked not to feel love? You do not love her. I do not love you. She did love me once. Now it is gone. Like water down a plug hole. If you must be so mundane. And if I had turned a blind eye? Things may still have been as they are. I should like very much to cry. But I'm not one for tears. Dear God, must you always be the heroine? You are like a hard-boiled egg that longs to be cracked. A hard-boiled egg with a little cosy on. But underneath... I fear you may be discombobulated. There is one at home. Please! Who Please do not bring... Sir Roger is quite safe. You know full well. What are you? I am her friend. I have never seen you at the golf club. Chasing silly little balls. I detect that you do not hail from the home counties. Are you all right, Mum? I am still alive, so I think I must be. Tell the constabulary we are packed and ready to leave. Never did trust a copper. They're all fellas and there's too much as eludes them. I am in a debate with a... A chambermaid? When I put my costume on? 
You see, there are worlds in which we are quite otherwise. You have been exposed to her infantile philosophy, a world of fairies and phantasms which rise from the sea. For a writer, she is eminently sensible. I fear her characters have been horribly miscast, however. Well, we have had a grand old chat. Why could you not have been honest, sir? I am under investigation by the lower orders. Since you have fallen in love with a typist. So the world is eavesdropping at our door. The lady in question has brown curls and a tiny waist, I understand. And many other accomplishments. Golf. Yes, I had heard. It keeps a person remarkably fit. I prefer to swim. Where your figure might not be seen other than by monsters of the deep. I never thought a villain would reveal himself in plain sight. The minor character. She is still making her little contribution. There is no such thing, sir. We are all heroes in our own lives. Good heavens, a communist. A communist? Then long live the revolution. Is that a real gun, Nan? Along with her prop. Ah, to be in the West End now. My uncle topped off four German officers with this little love. See, they'd stuck a bit of shrapnel in him and he wasn't right happy about it. I'm a terrible shot. I might hit him in the head or somewhere more vital. Then I am to die. Ariadne, dear, are you getting this down? Have you said sorry? Sorry? Have you apologised? It is customary in cases of adultery. Uh, please, Nan. I did not hear any words approaching regret. But he is here, is he not? And that will pass in the upper orders. Marriage is a complicated business. I have seen what joy it brings. Then you will know that a husband may... Oh, And a wife. I'm sorry. A wife may... <laughs> make mistakes. I should have thrown the teapot harder. Was your aim not true? My arm was vigorous, but my vision was clouded. What errors are these? Is it not time for a full reckoning? You're mad. I'm quite sane, if a little discombobulated. You do not mean to... This is not a silly story, sir. The ending's looking bleak. <sighs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Ariadne. What for? For... For falling in love with someone else. There. We're done now. And? Nan. I do not wish to hear... <laughs> While sparing us the details of your sport, is there not some other atonement that needs to be made? I am sorry, I do not... After the manner of your speaking to Mrs Shepherd. Mrs Shepherd? I do not know why I selected such a silly nom de plume. You were confused, Mum. Turned every which way by a man who talks to you as if you are an item of furniture. My husband is a practical man. And yet he finds time for romance. I'm sorry, Mum, Mrs Oliver. There, sir. It's not hard, is it? I am sorry, Ariadne, if I do not always speak to you kindly. During the war... It is 1926, sir, and you seem to have recovered from your shell shock. I have such a pistol at home. Very good, sir. It was examined for traces of blood. Oh, Bruce! Perhaps I should have taken it to myself. Then I should have been suspected. Or Miss Shepherd. She is yet so gay and carefree. Please do not refer to her with such frequency. She is a minor character, then. She has so little fault in this matter. It is you who faces the firing squad. I see you have a photograph of me. Then you cannot entirely despise me. You are so distinguished. I give a good appearance of valour. You fought long and hard against our common foe. It was not easy to return to civilian life. Why did we never talk like this? It was a different time. But if we can talk like this now, then surely... Perhaps. The police will be in soon, Nan. I should not like to see you arrested. I am sure we will all forgive and forget. I have no complaint here. A man will say anything down the barrel of a gun. It's not too late to top him off. Nan, I'm begging you. I hear a slow poisoning's more effective. I fear for you, Nan, and your position here. I shall try the cruise ships. I understand there is a fortune to be made for one who seeks adventure. And your family? You had to go and spoil it. I had a dream for a second there. A vision, almost. A prognostication. I'm sorry. 
I just wanted him to feel something. I'm certain his heart is racing. Then we shall know he has one. Here, you keep the weapon. For next time. Thank you. You look good with a gun in your hand, Mrs Oliver. I'll put it away. Safely, of course. These blasted zips. Where are you going, Bruce? My heart is racing. Then we must talk. While our daughter sobs alone. You have a child? Yes. Yes. And she has two dogs, a favourite and one of whom she is less fond, who has not been ennobled. Maybe I should have turned the gun on you, Mrs Oliver. Our daughter thinks I'm a foolish old woman. Do you know what she said? I know Daddy likes me and would like to be with me. It's you he doesn't seem to like. Oh, Mum. Such a clear-sighted child. No fairy tales, but a bald photograph of the truth. Yet we so often make them the agents of our imagination. You shall keep her, of course. I shall be seen consorting with another woman at a hotel, and the divorce shall be straightforward. I had thought we might talk. A man will say anything down the barrel of a gun. It's not too late. You must keep the child. But I want you. And we shall remain amicable once I have married Miss Shepherd. Then my fate is inescapable. Maybe it's written in another place. You refer to heaven, I suppose. I'm told it's a lovely location. Well appointed. Everything you could want any time of day. At least there I should not be taken as the most enormous fool. If you make it in. What do you suppose I have made myself an outcast? Therein the patient must minister to himself. Macbeth. No idea what it means. What shall we say? You have suffered from loss of memory. It is not inconceivable. It is the only logical conclusion. Oh, to find a practical man. I was rather in a state, was I not, Nan? When I arrived. You're in a state now, Mum. Yes. Yes, I am. And you will not say otherwise, Nan? I keep my own counsel, sir. I have had fun, though. Yes. It has been fun. After a fashion. I shan't forget you. Although I cannot expect correspondence. The poor soul falls slow from Whitby. I had thought you were set upon the cruise ships. I can't sing. I can't dance. I can't even make the bed. The press are waiting for their photograph. They wish to see you make a dignified exit. Nan, promise me you will go to America. They've got wolves and bears. And log cabins where one might hide. I'll think about it. That is all anyone can ask. Oh, Nan, what is to become of me? You will be loved. And who should comfort you? I shall survive, I dare say. We all do, in our own ways. Thank you. Don't let her carry her own case, Mr Oliver. You won't forget to remember me. Better make the bed. There'll be another mystery guest along. Soon enough. Double act. Juliet Vaughan Turner was Mrs. Oliver. Holly Galanders was Nan. And Ian Sterling was Bruce. Artwork for the production was by Sheila Jackson. Technical presentation was by John Fryer. And the play was written and directed by Trisha Bracher. Double Act is an audio production for political art. Lord, I dressed him up from his head down to his.